are the physiological differences you often see between a CrossFit athlete and mm -hmm. say a hybrid athlete? Say you've got someone that wants to be like a power lifter, but at the same time wants to really improve uh, their five or 10K time. Mm -hmm. um, based on what you were talking about earlier regarding mitochondrial density and muscle capillarization uh, and how with uh, endurance athletes, they normally rise together uniformly, but you're seeing these big differences between the both when it came to CrossFit athletes. Do you see difference between like a CrossFit athlete and a hybrid athlete or are they mm -hmm. largely relatively similar? Yeah, in my experience, they are similar to a degree. And I consider like military special operations as hybrid athletes in a sense, because they need to develop all these different competencies, but they don't need to be able to smash it all together and do it in a five to 10 minute period like a crossfitter. Mm -hmm. I've also worked with people that are power lifters and ultra marathon runners. So in general, all of these athletes, they need good mitochondrial density. They need good capillary density. They need high cardiac output, good respiratory muscle endurance, optimal levels of tension in the muscle for their task. The difference is, is when you just need to have all of those qualities and when you need to have all of them and use them all within a very short time period. And that's what separates the hybrid athlete from the CrossFitter. There's very simple things like a hybrid athlete needs to have good diaphragm muscle strain, both because the diaphragm is a major spinal stabilizer. So if they're trying to be a power lifter, you need good diaphragm muscle strain. They also need good diaphragm muscle endurance because that's going to allow them to sustain very high ventilation rates when they go and run their event. Well, for a CrossFitter, as a simple example, they also need those qualities. But what happens when now they're doing a Metcon with a ton of deadlifts at 315 pounds in it, that diaphragm is still having to stabilize their spine. And it's also needing to be used to maintain very high ventilation rates for all the other things that they're doing. So it's the same physiology in both of those cases, but it's being used differently. And that's where there's other sports-specific requirements that a CrossFitter has that hybrid athlete doesn't. I wouldn't even necessarily say that this means a CrossFit athlete is more impressive or anything like that. Because it's very clear that a lot of hybrid athletes, like I saw you had uh, Fergus Crowley on a few episodes ago. Yeah. I mean, he does things that most CrossFit Games competitors simply cannot do. Mm. He's stronger than a lot of them are. He could run a mile faster than a lot of them can, let alone his abilities to run very long distances. I'd also imagine, though, CrossFit Games athletes could do things that he cannot do. So they have the same base physiology, but then that's where they layer on the sport specificity to kind of train those weapons for a specific task. Mm. 